my name is anirban simitra mechanical engineering department mes college of engineering wadia college campus pune today i explain the theories of failure basically how to solve the numerical of theories of failure which is very important for competitive exam as well as that university curriculum exam before starting the theories of failure we try to revise the formula of principal stresses again for 2d system you can understand from this element two dimensional element normal stresses along x axis and y axis which is called the sigma x and sigma y and some shear stresses applied along the plane tau xy the sign convention of sigma x sigma y and tau xy is a very important to solve the problem i explain in details in next slide so now we want to explain you the formula of principal stresses so first we check the formula of maximum principal stresses so you can see this maximum principal stresses is normally denoted by sigma 1 and that's equal to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau xy square so if you see that minimum principal stresses that is normally denoted by the sigma 2 remember this sigma 1 sigma 2 this 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 is required in the formula of theories of failure so sigma 2 is again sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 minus of under root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau xy square now you just check this two formula carefully this term and this term is same this under root uh, under root term and this term is also same only difference between this two is one is in case of a sigma 1 it is coming positive value in case of a sigma 2 it is a negative okay so that is the thing only you have to remember when you write down that formula of maximum principal stresses and minimum principal stresses and when we use this sigma 1 and sigma 2 formula if in the problem sigma x is given sigma y is given and tau xy is also given then to find out the maximum and minimum we have to use this formula but sometimes normally in case of a numerical they are given the one directional stresses that is along the x axis or along that y axis normally they are given along that x axis only so if they are given only one directional stresses one directional normal stresses then we consider sigma y is equal to 0 and considering sigma equal to sigma x and tau is equal to tau xy as the tau xy and tau yx is same so that is denoted by the tau 1 only then this formula of sigma 1 sigma 2 is in simplified form so you can see now if i put that value of tau of sigma y is equal to 0 in this equations and sigma x equal to sigma and tau xy is equal to tau then this formula of sigma 1 becomes sigma by 2 plus under root of sigma by 2 plus tau square similarly the minimum principal stresses formula sigma 2 is equal to sigma by 2 minus of under root of sigma by 2 whole square plus tau square okay so this is the simplified formula whenever they are given sigma x sigma y and tau xy use this formula to find out sigma 1 and sigma 2 if they are given only one normal stresses uh, sigma only and that one tau then use the simplified formula in this case now we checked the sign convention of sigma x and sigma y proceeding we just try to understand the sign convention which is very important sign conventions for sigma if it is in tensile forces that means outward from the body then it will be positive sign for the compressive type of the stresses if it is towards the body then the negative sign sign convention for shear stresses that is somehow confusing thing but just remember properly i am just talking about the sig tau xy tau xy is actually denoted for tau on the plane of sigma x that is called the sigma x plane sigma x plane means if the sigma x is an horizontal axis then the plane of sigma x is the vertical plane so anti clockwise on vertical plane or sigma x plane is positive clockwise in in that sigma x plane is actually the negative sign so i am given you the two case study you just see this diagram here the sigma x is outward from the body tension 
sigma y is towards the body compression and tau xy don't check the sign conventions for the horizontal plane always check the sign convention for the vertical plane that is the plane of sigma x if this sigma tau xy is rotating in anti clockwise directions on a vertical plane then that is called positive if it is a rotating in clockwise direction on a vertical plane then it will be considered as a negative tau so here for this case i think the sigma x positive sigma y negative tau xy as it is an anti clockwise positive you just check that answer sigma x positive sigma y negative and tau xy is positive check the second case also so i think from this one you can also give that answer so can you please check that answer of sign convention of sigma x sigma y i think the sigma x towards the body compression negative sigma y outward from the body tension positive and tau xy don't check that uh, sign convention horizontal we have to check the sign convention for vertical or sigma x plane so it is rotating in clockwise direction so i think the tau xy is also coming the negative so sigma x is negative sigma y is positive tau xy clockwise is negative sign conventions so with this proper sign convention of xy and tau xy we have to put this value in the formula of principal stresses so basic type of the stresses applied or normally asked in the numerical is for the circular cross section so i again take the same formula here the sigma 1 sigma 2 so normally if they are given the direct value of sigma x sigma y and tau xy in the problem then we can use that first basic formula of the principal stresses but normally it is not given in numerical so we have to find out the value of the normal stresses and the tau in one directional stresses only so i am just consider the tau where this in this formula the sigma 1 is maximum principal stress sigma 2 is minimum principal stresses and sigma is a normal stresses and tau is the shear stresses so how many different type of the sigma normal stresses is considered that i explain in this slide so first see one circular shaft having the diameter d okay now if you applied the tensile stresses along the axis of this plane that is called the ft then i think and along that <coughs> plane okay all the four plane it should be applied along the plane if there some shear stresses is applied fs fs is applied on this one then what are the different type of the stresses is produced so normal stresses due to this ft normal stresses is produced tensile stresses and formula of normal stresses sigma t is equal to tensile force divided by the cross section area what is the cross section area for the circular shaft it will be pi by 4 d square so tensile stresses sigma t is equal to ft by a due to ft similarly due to the fs also some shear stresses applied that is called the direct shear stresses denoted by tau tau d that is equal to shear force divided by that again area and that area we are considering the for circular cross section again it will be pi by 4 d square so due to this uh, force diagram tensile stresses as a normal stresses and tau d as in shear stresses is applied similarly if some compressive compressive force is applied on this shaft fc then compression compressive stresses is produced sigma c and that's equal to fc divided by a okay that is also the normal type of the stresses if instead of sigma c fc if some moment is applied here some moment is applied here that value magnitude of the moment or notations of the moment is m then due to this moment i think the bending stresses also developed in this shaft and the formula of bending stresses using the flexural formula so that is called the sigma b is equal to m into y divided by i where m is called moment y is called the maximum fiber distance and i is called the moment of inertia okay so these are the maximum three normal stresses can produced in an any object tensile compressive and the bending okay and the shear stresses the direct shear stresses if the direct shear force is applied or instead of direct shear stresses if some torque is also applied on the shaft then due to this torque there is a torsional shear stress is also produced that is formula of tau t 
is equal to T into R divided by J, where T is called the torque applied. So, this is the torque applied. R is equal to radius of the shaft, that is called the D by 2, and J is called the polar moment of inertia, that is pi by 32 into D raised to 4. Okay. So, these are the maximum possible sigma and tau which is used here to find out the maximum principal stresses and minimum principal stresses. Okay. So, just check that. So, what you have to remember for the circular cross section? Sigma, sigma can be sigma c or sigma t. The formula is the force divided by pi by 4 d square for the circular cross section or if the moment is applied that is equal to sigma sigma equal to sigma b which is the m into d by 2 pi by 64 into d raised to 4 that is called the moment of inertia and uh, for the torsional uh, for the shear stresses tau is equal to tau d shear force divided by pi by 4 d square and if the torque is applied then the formula become t into d by 2 pi by 32 into d raised to 4 that is the polar moment of inertia ok. So, in this in this formula to find out the sigma 1 the sigma can find out from this if they are given the tensile or compressive uh, forces or if they are given the moment we can using this flexural formula to find out the sigma and if they are given some shear forces so to find out the tau we are using that fs shear forces or instead of forces if they are given the torque we have to use this formula to find out the torque. Once you get this value I think we can find out the maximum principal stresses that is sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, that is the very important step to uh, find out the principal stresses maximum and minimum and using this sigma 1 sigma 2 we have to use the you have to find out the theories of failure formula. So, now I am coming to that theories formula of theories of failure. What is the theories of failure? That is the failure criteria ok. To find out the dimensions of the stresses whatever is the stresses maximum stresses can be produced uh, should be equal to that uh, uh, that uh, equal to that strength of that material ok. So, strength of the material can be that uh, it could be that elastic limit of the material I think you know that stress strain graph uh, stress strain graph also. So, after that elastic limit uh, till that elastic limit the Hooke's laws is obeys stress and strain is in directly proportional and it will be elastic resin if you remove that forces it will regain its original shape ok. So, after crossing the elastic there is a some plastic deformations ok and in case of a ductile material we get the other two uh, important point on the stress strain graph that is called the yield point which is denoted by S y t where the yielding started and the, uh, and the next point is the ultimate tensile strength value that is called the UTS S ultimate ok that is called the ultimate. So, according to or depending on the failure criteria we have to use the material property either sigma E L which is called that elastic limit or S Y T which is the yield limit or ultimate limit for the ductile, but for the brittle material we are not getting any yield point. So, we are directly getting either uh, sigma E L that is elastic limit or the ultimate tensile value. So, how to correlate the stress developed and strength of that material to find out the dimensions of the factor of safety that is basically the theories of failure. So, there is a total 5 theories of failure. I have listed down that formula of theories of failure. You just remember the formula from this. So, the first theories of failure is called the maximum principal normal stresses or Rankine theory that is also called the Rankine theory. All the names should be you have to remember in that exam they can ask any uh, by any names also. So, uh, this formula what I am listed down here it is only for the two dimensional system. So, uh, there is a no sigma 3 it is only sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, out of sigma 1 and sigma 2 sigma 1 is the maximum that we know maximum principal stresses either less than or equal to sigma yield divided by the factor of safety that is the conditions of the maximum principal stresses theory where the sigma E L can be elastic limit or S Y T or S ultimate and F S is the factor of safety. So, instead of which one you should take it it is depending on the design criteria of that component ok. So, this is the condition sigma 1 is a less than equal to sigma E L by factor of safety according to maximum principal normal stress or Rankine theory ok. This theory, this theory is suitable for brittle material ok. So, brittle material is the fracture type of the thing. So, where brittle material we are normally 
uh, we are not getting that SYT value. So, it is either sigma EL elastic limit or it could be the S ultimate depending on that problem that value what value of the material property is given we just consider as an sigma EL value either elastic limit or it could be ultimate limit also. Okay. Similarly, the second theory of failure is a maximum shear stress theory of failure that is also called the Tresca gives theory. I think you know that already we have that tau max in that principal stresses or in the Mohr circle also tau max equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2. What is the sigma 1? Maximum principal stresses. What is the sigma 2? Minimum principal stresses divided by 2 should be less than equal to of tau yield. Remember the tau yield is a basically half of the normal stresses. So, normal stresses, normal allowable stresses is the sigma EL divided by factor of safety. It is a half of that. So, sigma EL divided by 2 into factor of safety is actually the tau EL. Okay. Again, sigma EL could be that elastic limit SYT or SYT and FS is the factor of safety for these cases. Again, this theory is suitable for the ductile material. So, here the sigma EL could be equal to Alt, uh, elastic limit or SYT or S ultimate. But in case of a brittle material, normally we are not getting SYT. So, it should be equal to that S ultimate or the uh, uh, elastic limit only. So, this is the two theories of failure. Okay. Next three theories of failure. The third one is the maximum principal strain or sent venance theory. Okay. According to this theory, sigma 1 minus mu sigma 2 is a less than equal to the sigma EL divided by factor of safety. Sigma EL divided by factor of safety is also called the allowable stresses, also called the allowable stresses. Same thing, sigma EL could be SYT, elastic limit, SYT or ultimate. FS is the factor of safety. Mu is a new term introduced here, which is called the Poisson's ratio. Okay, sometimes if it is not given in the numerical, we should assume it 0.3, that is for the mild steels, normally we are taking it as a 0.3 only. Okay. Fourth theories of failure is the maximum strain energy that is called Higgs theory. Remember this one is called the principal strain theory and this one is called the maximum strain energy or Higgs theory. According to this formula, it will be sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2 should be less than equal to sigma yield okay. uh, that is called the elastic not the sigma yield sigma elastic divided by factor of safety by 2. less than equal to sigma elastic divided by factor of safety uh, uh, the whole square. Remember it is going to be whole square. Okay. Uh, again sigma elastic could be elastic limit SYT or SYT. FS is called the factor of safety. Mu is again poison ratio. If it is not given we, con we can consider as a 0.3. The last theory is the maximum distortion energy theory. That is also called the one mises or Hankey's theory. That is a very important theory. Okay, maximum FEA software is using the one mises theory. Okay. Okay, that is the more, more economical theories of failure actually. Okay. So, according to this theory of failure, sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus of sigma 1 sigma 2 less than equal to sigma elastic divided by factor of safety whole square. Okay. See this two formula, all the formula is having the same type of, so you have to remember properly the formula. In case of a strain energy, it will be 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2, but here in case of a distortion energy or 1 minus Hanke theory, it will be sigma 1 and sigma 2 only. Okay. This theory is suitable for the ductile material. Okay. In case of a ductile material, we can take that uh, this limit or strength could be elastic, SYT that is called the yield strength or it could be the ultimate strength also. So, these are the total five theories of failure to correlate the strength uh, developed in the component with the material strength, material strength to find out the dimensions and the factor of or the factor of safety uh, for that component. Okay. So, I have solved now two, three problem to understand this uh, concept properly. So, the first problem I just read the statement, the stress induced at a critical point in a machine component made of a steel are sigma x equal to 100 mega Pascal, sigma y is equal to 40 mega Pascal, this is tau x y is equal to 80 mega Pascal, calculate the factor of safety FOS 
by maximum shear stress theory remember maximum shear stress theory i think it is our second theory and the maximum distortion energy theory that's our fifth theory i assume syt yield value now they are given 380 mega pascal so i first write down the data i try to uh, uh, plot one element diagram in this case as the sigma x is given positive 100 mega pascal so along the x direction it will be tensile stresses Similarly, sigma 1 is also positive 40 mega pascal along y direction sigma y is equal to 40 mega pascal and tau xy on the on the plane of the sigma x or on the vertical plane it will be given positive 80 mega pascal that means it will be rotating in anti-clockwise direction so I show it in the upward tau xy is equal to 80 mega pascal other direction is exactly opposite to each other. Okay, so if I write down the data in this case, SYT is given 380 mega pascal, sigma x is positive, this positive negative is a very important, there is a chances of the mistake in a numerical, so positive 100 mega pascal, sigma y positive 40 mega pascal, tau xy 40, and what you have to find out, we have to find out the factor of safety using the maximum shear stress theory uh, and maximum distortion, distortion energy theory. So I first list down the formula. I think you can remind the second theory is the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 that is maximum shear stress theory less than or equal to sigma yield divided by 2 into factor of safety. So to find out the factor of safety we require it to find out the sigma 1 sigma 2 as sigma EL for this problem is given 380 mega Pascal that is according to the maximum shear stress theory. Similarly, as per maximum distortion energy theory, the formula becomes sigma 1 that is also called the 1 minus theory, sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 less than or equal to sigma EL by factor of the whole square. Yes. Here also, we know sigma EL is equal to SYT now, only we require to find out sigma 1 and sigma 2. So then how to find out sigma 1 and sigma 2? I think we know this is the basic formula as they are given in the problem sigma x and sigma y and tau xy. So we can use the basic formula of sigma 1 as well as the sigma 2 in this cases. Okay. So uh, you can, I, I just take the data here in the next slide also to understand the problem. So I solved this problem, just checked it. It's an easily you can understand sigma x is plus 100, sigma y plus 40, tau xy plus 80, syt is the 380 mega pascal. So the same data I am taking it in that corner only to understand. Now just check it. I have to use the same formula of sigma 1, sigma x plus y by 2 plus of under root of x minus y by 2 plus tau xy. So what is the value of the sigma x? It will be 100. I can check it 100. Sigma y is in 40. Here again it will be same tau xy is equal to 80. So remember only one thing. The, in the calculator you find out this this term and this term separately and write, write down in this way only as this term is equal to 70 and this term is equal to 85.44 and in between it will be positive once it will be positive it will coming positive of 155.44 mega pascal the meaning of positive the sigma y y one is tensile in nature okay similarly sigma 2 the same formula all the term is same only negative value all the values are also same so that's why i told you just, just remember this two values to be separately calculated in the calculator here it will be positive here it will be negative so sigma 1 is 155.44 mega pascal sigma 2 if it is a negative value then it will be negative 15.44 mega pascal the meaning of negative sign here the sigma 2 is in compressive nature okay so i think from this slide i am getting this two value for the further calculation sigma 1 is equal to plus 155.44 sigma 2 is equal to minus 15.44 mega pascal syt it is already given here 380 mega pascal so in the next slide is a continuation of that last one sigma 1 i am getting 155.44 sigma 2 minus 115.44 syt 380 so now I have to use according to the maximum shear stress theory after getting the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2, I think the formula of tau max equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 equal to sigma EL divided by 2 into factor of safety. You just put that value of sigma 1, sigma 2 here and sigma EL is equal to SYT 380 to get the value of the factor of safety. So putting all value 
here only remember sign convention is a very important it will be negative of negative as the sigma 2 is equal to minus 15.44 so negative of negative it is coming the positive value here if the 2 2 is cancelled and the factor of safety according to the maximum stress test theory is 2.22 that is the final answer according to the maximum shear stress theory similarly this is the value of the sigma 1 sigma 2 syt as per the distortion energy theory sigma 1 square sigma 2 square minus of sigma 1 sigma 2 less than or equal to sigma el by factor of safety whole of square putting the value of the same sigma 1 155.44 sigma 2 of negative 15.44 here also it will be plus and minus so this minus this minus it will become the plus here 380 divided by whole square so i just calculate everything taking the roots on both the side so if it is coming 163.67 to 380 by factor of safety and according to the distortion energy theory factor of safety is coming 2.32 so that's the solutions of the question number one i think easily you can understood so your aim is to find out the sigma one sigma two in the last problem in the question number one they had given the value of sigma x sigma y tau xy directly we are using to, uh, to find out the value of the sigma 1 sigma 2 but now see the question number 2 okay here i just read the statement at a certain positions of a circular structure of diameter d is subjected to the shear force of 10 kilo newton shear force they are given 10 kilo newton together with an axial tensile load of 20 kilo newton if the allowable working stress check the statement they are given allowable working stress is 67.5 mega pascal estimate the magnitude of the d that is a diameter required according to maximum principal stress theory this question is asked to one of that curriculum of uh, the sppu actually for the six marks so i took that same problem only uh, required according to maximum principal stress theory okay so first i just try to write on the data here they are given the shear force f is equal to 10 kilo newton immediately converted into the newton 10 into 10 raised to 3 ft 20 kilo newton 20 into 10 raised to 3 and sigma allowable means it will be sigma el divided by factor of safety so that you have to remember here that is called the allowable stresses which is directly given the 67.5 newton per mm square mega pascal means it will be newton per mm square what you have to find out find dia d by maximum principal stress theory so i think maximum principal stress theory means theory number one so what is that formula of maximum principal stress theory sigma one should be less than or equal to sigma el by factor of safety here the whole term is given 67.5 so i know the right hand term i have to find out the sigma one so how to find out the sigma one again using this formula okay but in this formula they are not given any value of the sigma x sigma y separately they are only given the value of the fs and ft so fs to find out the tau and ft to find out the value of the sigma t that is called the sigma in one directional normal stress so then how to find out sigma i think this formula you can remind uh, you can remember this one the sigma is equal to sigma t equal to it will be ft divided by pi by 4 d square d is the unknown term in this cases so the same value of the sigma you have to put it in the value of the sigma 1 similarly tau is equal to tau d that is a direct shear stress as they are given the fs equal to a pi by 4 d square into d square divided by 4 so this value again d is the unknown fs is known in this cases so now i am just putting this using the same formula here ft is equal to 20 into 10 raised to 3 okay that is in newton d is in mm so the value of sigma i am getting 25.46 into 10 raised to 3 d square similarly to find out the tau d fs by area fs is given 10 into 10 raised to 3 so i can i can find out the value of the tau is equal to 12.73 into 10 raised to 3 so from this slide okay i required in the next slide where the sigma is equal to 25.46 into 10 raised to 3 divided by d square tau is equal to 12.73 10 raised to 3 d square mega pascal and the allowable that is equal to sigma el by factor safety which is the sigma allowable equal to 67.5 mega pascal okay so i i carry forward the same value of the sigma and tau here okay so now with this sigma and tau now i have to use the principal stresses that is called the sigma one okay so sigma one is equal to sigma y2 plus of under root of sigma y2 whole square plus tau square putting the value of sigma 25.46 tau 
12.73 it is in terms of the d only okay d only so it is under root of you just see the simple formula for this one according to the maximum principal stresses theory sigma 1 should be less than or equal to sigma el divided by factor of safety here the sigma el by factor of safety is given the 67.5 and the sigma 1 we are getting the value from here so i simplified this term here okay so i under root this this is the two term is coming here so 25.46 divided by 2 is coming 12.73 this one is also coming 12.73 both are whole square and on the uh, and it will be under root equal to 67.5 okay so i'm carry forward the same thing squaring the both the term so it will coming the same d raised to 4 here and then after squaring it i under root it 18 into 10 to the 3 d raised to 4 under root it will coming a d square again right hand side 67.5 it will be allowable stresses so if you add it it will coming 30.73 into 10 to 3 d square equal to 67.5 d square is equal to 455.3 taking the roots on both the side d is coming 21.33 mm approximately it will come in the 22 mm so i think that's the end of that question too okay to find out the d the difference between question 1 is sigma x sigma y tau x y is given question 2 they are given the ft and fs value and we found out the value of the sigma and tau and using the simplified formula of the sigma 1 uh, to find out the diameter d now the third question you just checked it third question again they are given a solid circular shaft of diameter 30 mm is a made from plain carbon steel with the yield point of 200 mega pascal so they are given the syt is equal to 200 mega pascal it is subjected to peak bending moment of 600 newton meter due to transverse loading and twisting moment twisting moment means it is in torque okay twisting moment of 630 newton meter remember the unit newton meter determine the factor of safety using first one maximum normal stress theory that is the theory number one then maximum shear stress theory that is the theory number two and the maximum strain energy theory so i think it will be theory number three okay this is question again asked in one of the university exam for the 13 marks okay so i just write down the data first diameter of the circular shaft is given now in the last problem that is to be found out here it will be given 30 mm then the m m is given the moment is equal to given it will be 600 newton meter so from the 600 newton meter immediately everything to be converted into the newton mm only 600 into 10 raised to 3 newton mm torque 630 newton meter so that will be 630 into 10 raised to 3 syt is given 200 mega pascal okay so uh, here the first theories is normal stress theory so sigma 1 is equal to less than equal to sigma el divided by factor of safety el here is syt 200 factor of safety we have to find out sigma 1 i have to find out again using the formula of the principal stresses the second question is maximum shear stresses sigma 1 minus sigma 2 less than equal to sigma el by 2 into factor of safety and third one is the maximum strain energy theory sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus of 2 mu sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma el by factor of safety by 2 okay so how to find out the sigma 1 for this formula sigma by 2 under root of sigma by 2 plus tau square and then how to get the sigma and tau that's the only difference between that problem number two or question number two and question number three question number two we are getting that value of sigma okay that is that is that uh, tensile stresses uh, tensile forces is given in that problem but here to find out the sigma they are given the bending moment okay to find out the tau question number two they had given that fs value direct shear force value but here instead of fs to find out the tau value we are finding out the torsional shear stresses and for the torsional shear stresses they are given the twisting moment that is called torque is given in the problem okay so sigma 2 and sigma 1 using this formula we can find out and how to find out sigma using the flexural formula m into d by 2 pi by 4 d raised to 4 we know m we know d how to find out the tau tau is equal to t into d by 2 pi by 4 d raised to 4 again we know t we know d we can find out the value of the tau putting the value of sigma here and tau here in this problem we can get the value of sigma 1 sigma 2 so just check how to solve the problem so i, I took down I, I list down this uh, this is the data we required in the next slide diameter 30 moment 600 into 3 
torque 630 10 to 3 syt 200 and mu which is the poison ratio required in the third uh, strain energy theory formula which is not given in the problem we can assume it 0.3 okay so the same data i carry forward here so to find out the sigma b i am using m by i sigma by y sigma equal to m into y by i where that sigma is equal to m into y is equal to d by 2 and i is equal to pi by 64 d raised to 4 simplified version of sigma is equal to 32 m pi d q putting the value of m equal to 632 into 600 into 10 raised to 3 newton m m diameter is given 30 30 q so the value of sigma is coming to 26.36 newton per mm square to find out the torsional shear stress tau t, I, I know the formula t by j is equal to tau t by r. So if I simplify t into r divided by j, so r is equal to d by 2, j is equal to polar moment, moment of inertia pi by 32 d raised to 4, putting that value again t is equal to 630 into 10 raised to 3, 2 and 32 is cancelled and it will coming in the top. So 16 into t, 16 into 630 into 10 raised to 3 pi into d cube is equal to 30 cube again. So if you simplified it, that value of tau is coming 118.84. So from this slide, okay, we are getting the sigma is equal to 226.36 Newton per mm square. Tau is equal to 118.84. SYT is given 200 Newton per mm square. And mu, we assumed it 0.3. So we carry forward this, this data in the next slide, the same sigma, tau, SYT and mu value. Now, the first question they ask the principal stresses theory, we have to find out the sigma 1 and sigma 2. So sigma 1 is equal to sigma by 2 plus under root of sigma by 2 square plus tau square. We have the sigma is equal to 226.36. We have the tau is equal to 118.84. So using this formula, we're getting the sigma 1 is equal to 277.28. Similarly here using the negative value, I am getting the sigma 2 is equal to minus of 50.92. The negative sign indicates the compressive type of stresses and positive sign indicates here the tensile type of stresses. Once we got the sigma 1, sigma 2, I think we can use our basic formulas theories of failure. So from this slide, I, I, I list down the sigma 1 is equal to positive 277.28, sigma 2 is equal to minus of 50.92, SYT 200, mu 0.3. So I carry forward this data in the next slide. Okay. Now, according to the maximum normal stress theory, sigma 1 is equal to less than equal to sigma EL by factor of safety, where the sigma EL for this problem is then SYT 200 Newton per mm square. Sigma 1, we are getting it 277.28, sigma EL 200 divided by factor of safety. So, factor of safety we are getting 0.72. Now, just check that one, 0.72 is a less than 1. So the component is failed as the stress developed is a greater than the allowable value. The factor of safety should be greater than or equal to one for safe design. Here it will be failed in as per that normal stress theory. Okay. So second, according to the maximum shear stress theory, formula is sigma one minus sigma two divided by two, sigma L divided by two into factor of safety. So sigma one two seventy seven point two eight, sigma two here the negative. That's the one thing you have to remember all the time. It will be negative. Negative is coming positive. So here it will coming three twenty eight divided by two two hundred into two factor of safety. So factor of safety is coming actually two two is cancelled. Two hundred divided by three two uh, three two eight point two, which is coming point six one. So factor of safety according to the maximum shear stress point six one. So again, component is failed as a factor of safety is less than one. So third question they are asked to find out the factor of safety according to the maximum strain energy theory. So as per the theory, the formula is sigma one square plus sigma two square minus of two mu sigma one sigma two equal to or less than sigma El divided by factor of safety whole of square. Here that again elastic limit is there SYT 200 mega Pascal. So I'm putting all the value of sigma 1, 277, sigma 2 is minus of 50.92. So again, remember it will be negative value here. It will be 2 into 0 0.3, 277 and sigma 2 is equal to minus of 50.92. So here minus minus is coming positive value. So this value is coming 82.76 into 10 raised to 3. The whole square under root both the sides, it will be giving 287.68, 200 by factor of safety. Factor of safety according to the maximum strain energy theory is 0.68. Again, it will be less than one, hence the component is failed. Okay, component is failed. So these are the three different type of that problem. I solved it in case of a theories of failure. Uh, I think you understand that how to solve the theories of failure. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you.